What's up guys, it's Gina. Welcome back to Pokemon Showdown Live, episode number 71. And, there, um, and uh, we're going to be playing some Yu this week. Kind of a rocky start to that intro. Anyway, uh, I'm going to use this team that my boy Brendan built. Uh, really good team builder. You guys should all go check him out. Um, but anyway, so he passed me the team. This had Dreadplate. I changed the black glasses. That's the only thing I changed. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> um... But anyway, he has uh, CM Florges, he has a Stealth Rock, Black Glasses, Crocodile, um, Physically Defensive, Tentacruel, uh, Fast, Stallbreaker, Taunt Knot. Um, he originally had Mega Aggron here, but I replaced it for Mega Aerodactyl, so it uh, had a better match ever as Volturn. And then I added AV Entei, because AV Entei is nice. Um, and also, I'm going to uh, do my independent, like, suspect test, I guess. <laughs> of uh, three lives a week on the channel as opposed to five. Um, I'm gonna do three lives a week for two weeks and uh, see how it goes and uh, basically determine what um, I'm gonna do. Oh god, I didn't miss whichever that is, okay. And uh, basically determine what to do from there on out. So those of you who want daily lives, just stick with me for the next two weeks and uh, I'll determine where to go and uh, what's kind of best for me from there. And um, those of you who like the three live system, just let me know. I, I just want to hear what you guys think down in the comments section below. Because um, I know sometimes it's uh, kind of unfortunate and it makes it harder to watch somebody when they don't upload daily. But uh, then I also know there's the people who are like, wow, this guy kind of floods my sub box. And I don't want to come off as a bad way, but anyway. Uh, we're going to go ahead and pause it until we get a match. Never mind. Look at that. The powers. Um, no way. Mr. Powers from the LBA. Um, if this is actually Mr. Powers, it's going to be pretty funny. Anyway, uh, once this loads in here, we'll see uh, my opponent's team. And uh, Showdown is really laggy, but it's also because there's an OU suspect test going on right now. Uh, they're suspecting Mega Metagross. But uh, looking at his team, it's pretty weak to uh, my boy Crooked Owl right here. Um, Rocker on his team. Uh, he doesn't have one. So that's spikes, that's toxic spikes, probably. Um, to be honest, I don't see the harm in leading with Crocodile, uh, because I can bluff Banded Crocodile and, uh, potentially scare something like Tentacruel out and I can get on my rocks for free. And, uh, that's kind of the beauty of Black Glasses Crocodile, um, because it does, um, it, it does pretend that things are scarf and it can just n knock off his entire team and get up rocks freely this uh, this has become like my favorite thing to do in team preview just like drag the mons around and be like knock 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 anyway um he's gonna go ahead and lead with his hydreigon which i'm not very fond of that um i'm gonna go ahead and go into my florges um he may u-turn right here but i don't want him dropping a draco for free because uh, that'd be pretty unfortunate for me ah, i'm a rhyme lord um He's also really weak to psychic types, um, but there's like zero psychic types left in this tier after Megazam got banned. Um, I did see a cool core of Specs Reuniclus and Toxicroak, um, because the idea is that you pivot into Reuniclus. Uh, yeah, he just U-turned, it's fine. So I could have got my rocks up there if I really wanted to, but uh, not worth. Not worth. Um, I could have got my rocks up. Yeah, okay, anyway. Uh, Choice Specs Reuniclus. The idea is to pivot into it, uh, go for the future site, and then uh, go into Toxicroak and basically say, alright, something's dying to Toxicroak or something's dying to future site. It's pretty cool core. Anyway, speaking of Toxicroak, um, he goes into it right here. And uh, Tentacruel is a pretty safe switch in for me, um, despite the fact that I can't really do anything to him. Uh, there's not a whole lot he can do to me. Um, I could also pivot into Entei if I wanted to, uh, so we're going to go ahead and try that. Um, but we're going to go ahead and pause it until he makes a move. We'll be right back. Alright, we're back. Uh, right here I'm going to go into Entei. I'm kind of anticipating either the knockoff, the sucker, or the drain punch. Or he may sub up, but sub life orb would be really weird because Toxicroak is not the bulkiest of mods. And I don't think he wants it to get worn down that easily. But also another potential switch in to Tentacruel could be... Um, P2, which would always be nice if I get an Entei. Oh, he just SDs right in my face. Alright, I ain't having that. Uh, I'm going to go straight away for the Sacred Fire. Uh, I don't think he'll sucker here because I could E-Speed uh, pretty easily. And uh, he is a competent player, so I could see a Drain Punch. I don't know. Uh, we'll just have to see, I guess. Um, 
I could also go out in the arrow who resists uh, sucker and just aerialize him. But you know, uh, why do that when I can do this? Um, we'll does it, plus two sucker will kill me, won't it? He j he makes the switch out to P2. It's easy. Um, so with double pressure, I just lost four sacred fire PP, didn't I? No, I only lost two. Not bad. Uh, I'm gonna go into Crook right here and uh, try to get up my rocks because I can scare him out with the threat of a knockoff, as he'll probably just recover here. Um, if I really wanted to, I could Pursuit, which would be pretty nifty. Um, but I do want my rocks up because it does help me wear down his team a lot easier. And my rock setter beats his spinner. Um, so he ends up just going for the recover right here, which is fine. I'm just gonna go to get my rocks up. He'll more than likely pivot into Chestnut, which, you know, things could be worse for me. Because um, then I can just go out into Arrow and start clicking Aerial Ace versus his team. Um, because he doesn't have a whole lot of switch ins to Arrow. Um, Arrow's a pretty powerful mon. It's cool. I actually haven't used it yet before this team. Uh, Mega Arrow, that is. Uh, he, as he goes out into Chestnut, which is fine. I get my rocks up. Um, but now the jig is up that I'm not scarfed, but it's okay. Um, this team originally had a Scarf Rotom H over into, but I figured with Arrow you don't really need one. So, anyway, I'm going an Arrow right here. If he Drain Punches, so be it. Uh, he will die to an Aerial Ace from Aerodactyl, um, meaning his switch in will probably have, he actually has zero flying resists on his team. Yo, you, you bird spam? <laughs> um, Flesh Ender and uh, my Aerodactyl? Yeah. Um, he ends up going for his Dim, dim Seeds. And I'm just going to go straight away for an Aerial Ace right here. I don't care what he switches into, to be honest. Um, I just want to get off damage on something. Um, even if he goes into P2, um, P2 isn't too threatening for me. Because I can I, can, I, have, I, have, I have a lot of safe switches, switches out, switches out, out into P2. P2. Uh, um, I can't. I, can, I, can, I, can, I can, think I can actually sweep him with uh, CM Forges if I get rid of his two poison types. Uh, he ends up going for the... That's lame. I'm at 64% now. Uh, I'm just gonna Aerial Ace again, though. Because I do have Roost, so I won't get worn down too quickly. And, um, I can kind of... Like, like, that's the thing I really like about bulky offense. And I'm a horrible, off, like, balance builder. Or bulky offense or whatever. I'm horrible at building both of them. I'm pretty strictly a hyper offense builder. Um, but... It's a really fun play style to play. I just wish I knew how to play it better. Uh, he's actually made his move here, because I can't move around the sprites. Fun fact. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and go, lag, check. <sighs> Never mind. He hasn't made his move. It's okay. Um, so he ends up going out to P2 right here, um, which is going to take a miraculous 27% right there. Uh, he's at 47% right now. I'm anticipating him to just um, recover. But what I can do is I can click Pursuit right here. Um and weaken him on the switch, or as he switches out, I can go for the knockoff versus this as he seeds, and then pivot out into Ente and pressure his team from there. Uh, Cause right now P2 uh, doesn't have a very good matchup versus my team to be honest. Um, have a lot of mons that wall it pretty well. So yeah, he ends up just recovering. I'm gonna go for the pursuit, um, cause it may put him in range of two aerial aces, uh, which would be great if he can't switch in anymore. Cause this is clearly his physical wall. And uh, that just means that gets Stone Edged or Aqua Tail. That gets Aerial Aced. Um, that is Aerial Aced, and that can be too good by Aerial Ace. So um, I'm like wearing down a switch into the Mega Aerodactyl right now, and that's really helpful for my team. Uh, he stayed in. Okay. What's a knockoff? <laughs> like, I, I don't see why you want to lose your Violite so badly, but if you really do, if you really want to lose your Violite, we can, we can work it out. Um, He'll probably double the chestnut right here now that I went for pursuit. But it's okay. Um, I'm trying to figure out how I beat his two poison types without this. And uh, I think I. Yeah, okay, he just goes out of chestnut now. Okay. Uh, good news, I get rid of his violite. Uh, bad news, I just kind of have to click earthquake right here because I don't really want anything else getting seeded. Or I could go out of tentacruel, toxic spike. We're going to Tentacruel and double to Crook. That's a good play. Uh, we'll see how well it works out for me. I don't think it'll work out very well. Um, yeah, as I just tend to go for the EQ and see Drain Punch. Wonderful. Uh, so anyway, I'm going in. I'm going into Tentacruel, and then I'm doubling to my inexistent Crocodile. 
Um, no, I'll probably... Actually, what's the harm in me just going for Scald right here? I'm trying to get a burn off on something. Oh, he could go into this. That's a, that's an issue. Um, so I'm going to double the Aerodactyl right here, because Aerodactyl can threaten him. Or should I go into Entei? Huh. Food for thought. I'm going to go into Aerodactyl, because um, it puts him in a more unfavorable situation. And even though I risk the Scald burn right here, I don't think he's going to go for it. And I don't think he's going to stay in either, considering he's just giving me leftover recovery. And it gives me a chance to stack my hazards, uh, neither of which are very favorable for him. Um, as my voice cracks, wonderful. <laughs> um, yeah, he ends up making a double in Tentacruel right here, which is fine. Um, Stone Edge will do a lot, so I'm just going to go for that. Watch me miss and him burn me with the skull. That would be something that happens to me. <laughs> it really would, and that's the unfortunate part. Man, if Aerodactyl had anything other than other than Home Claws or had Brave Bird, it would be very, very good. Um, and that's like the one qualm with Mega Aerodactyl. It's really good versus offense, uh, which is why it's on here, because I felt that this team struggled a lot versus Bolt Turn and stuff. But, yeah, he goes into High Dragon. It's okay. Hit. Nice. Crit. <laughs> Easy. So, uh, yeah. So I added Mega Aerodactyl, but it's just not a very good wall breaker. It does get Taunt, which is nice as it can wear some stuff down. Uh, right here, I wouldn't be surprised. Or wait, wait, okay, so what is High Dragon's going, which is great. Um, makes Sacred Fire a little bit more spammable versus this team. Um, because Tentacruel doesn't really want to come in and take a burn because it'll take 12% from Hazards, like 30% from Sacred Fire, and then get burned, and I don't think that's what he wants to do. Um, anyway, right here, I think I'm just going to go out into my Chestnut. Just not my best play. No, just that's not my best play. Um, I can click Stone Edge, trying to knock him out right here. Um, how much did Tough Claws Area least do? 27%. You know, we'll go for Stone Edge. Um, I will more than likely miss, but it's okay. Um, because I can roost on the following turn. Because I highly doubt he's gonna Ice Beam here. He needs us at a good uh, amount of health in order to take on the rest of my team. And um, once I get rid of Tentacruel, I can just Hazard stack from here to Eternity. So he just goes for the cover. It's Ite. Um, right here, I'm just going to click Roost just to get up to an, a solid amount of HP. And then I'll probably go to Tentacruel and then back into Aerodactyl because I need to put enough pressure on his Tentacruel that I can keep my rocks up because they're really pivotal in helping me check Entei and uh, limiting P2 switch ins. And hey, once I get another spike up, then it's going to be a lot easier for uh, me to kind of control the match. Uh, he ends up going for the don't freeze me. Thank you. <laughs> so I'm going to go into Tentacruel right here. Um, although I could theoretically just click Roost until he's out of Ice Beams. Um, that did 27, so that'll do 54. I can live this. I'm going to go for an Aerial Ace because um, it may actually put him in range uh, of the Stone Edge, if I do want to go for that, um, which would be pretty cool if I could knock him out with the Stone Edge, because let's see, that'll do 27 plus 12, 39, yeah, Stone Edge can do 30%, um, he goes for the ice, don't crit me, easy, <laughs> 27, so it's a roll, and I can knock him out right here, so that's really nice for me, because uh, now I get P2 out of the way, uh, one less obstacle that I have to hurdle in, or in order to kind of bring this game home. It was really risky uh, to risk my Aerodactyl. It was risky to risk something. Yeah, uh, it was pretty risky for me to potentially throw away my Aerodactyl like that because uh, Aerodactyl is actually really pivotal for me in uh, winning this game. Um, but yeah, so I'm able to knock out P2 right there. Good thing is I can just click Roost if he goes into uh, Toxicroak. Or I can go into Entei. Either one works. Um, I'm kind of anticipating him to go into Entei right here, to be honest, uh, to click E-Speed. In which case, I just double to my own Entei and click Stone Edge. Is that a play? That's a play. Because um, I highly doubt he's clicking Sacred Fire right here. He has to click E-Speed to uh, knock me out. And um, the unfortunate thing about that play I made uh, versus P2 is that I can't just roost off damage. Or, like, it, it definitely removed opportunities for me to roost off damage. Um, which is a little bit unfortunate, but, you know. What are you going to do about it? Uh, so he does end up going for the E-Speed. That's banded. Is 
all glory. Uh, I'm going to click Stone Edge right here. Just because it is my safest play. Um, and I know from that E speed damage that he's banded. Because that did a stupid amount of damage. Um, even if he tries to go into Tentacroar here, he may actually be 2 KO'd by uh, this attack, which would be beautiful. Uh, although, although, I kind of got it out, to be honest. Because this, 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 this isn't banded in Tentacroar. If it goes into Tentacroar, kill. kill. Or, ah, easy crit. So, unfortunately, I have crit him a lot in this match, which is going to prevent him from stacking enough hazards. But, you know, day in the life of me right here. Um, right here, I could Stone Edge and bluff that I'm banded, but I'm at a competent range on the ladder, so he'll know that, based on that damage output, that I'm not banded. So, uh, may as well just go for the E speed here. Because he really doesn't have a whole lot of switch-ins left to Entei. Unfortunately, I won't be able to knock out his Entei with another E-Speed. Uh, he'll probably just go for the Stone Edge. So I'm fine risking Chestnut right there. Because um, it's a pretty high risk, high reward play for me. Because I can just throw down another Spike if uh, things don't work out. Or if things work out in my favor and he goes for the Stone Edge or the E-Speed. Uh, then I get another Spike, which is amazing. And I can taunt versus Toxicroak and prevent him from SDing versus me. Um, which basically turns it into mind games. Or I can just... Yeah, it, it also allows me to save Entei. Um, anyway, so I've explained that pretty thoroughly. I'm going to go ahead and pause until uh, he makes his move. Alright, so uh, he ended up just forfeiting there. Um, he didn't have a whole lot that he could do, to be honest. Um... Because at that point, I just won with Era. So, if you guys have enjoyed today's episode, please make sure to leave a like, because it really does help show support for the stuff that I'm doing here on the channel. Also, make sure to answer today's comment question of the video. Um, we're going to do a non-Pokemon related one this time. Even though I really want to do a Pokemon related one. Um, what do you guys have uh, going on this week that you guys are looking forward to? Um, I'm going to play some Don't Starve at some point. Because that game is really fun, even though I'm really bad at it. But, you know. Uh, with that, I urge you guys to subscribe if you guys are enjoying the constant content, and with that, I'll catch you on the flip-flop.